All right, I just read a thread on the internet where a buyer was saying, how in the world am I supposed to buy a house if I now have to pay my own real estate agent? And I think there's a lot of misconception about this rule change around agent to agent cooperation and commission sharing. So let's just quickly talk about the way it used to work. So the way that it worked in the past, Listing agent meets with the seller. They say, hey, this is what I charge. They agree on a commission rate, and then they agree that some portion of that commission will be offered as compensation to the agent that brings the buyer that ultimately buys the house. That, in a lot of cases, will likely still happen the exact same way. Here's the big difference is that that cooperation or that offer of compensation can no longer be offered publicly in the multiple listing system, et cetera. So that means your agent, your buyer's agent, is gonna to need to call the other agent, find out if they're offering cooperation or not. Uh, if they are, they'll tell you what it is, that's fine. The most important thing here and the idea behind this is that now a listing agent and a seller will decide what commission they're gonna be paid. And then a buyer's agent and a buyer We'll talk about what commission they're going to be paid. Now, functionally, how that commission is paid, it'll likely get included in the purchase price in the same way that it has in the past. But the goal here is to promote a more transparent and open dialogue around the compensation of that agent representing the buyer. It might put some pressure on price. It might bring commissions down in some cases. But hey, those aren't bad things. This is supposed to promote competition, to promote transparency, and to make it clearer for buyers um, you know, what that agent that is representing is getting paid. Now let's talk about something important because there was a moment in time where people were really worried. Well, hey, if the seller is paying this cost on behalf of a buyer, is this going to get counted towards the total percentage of buyer's closing costs that a seller can pay on the buyer's behalf? Now on most loans, that is capped at three, four, or 6%, depending on the loan program. But the great news, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Jenny Mae have all come out and said, no, 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 we are not going to count real estate agent commissions towards that cap. So it's a separate thing that'll be negotiated as part of the deal if there's not cooperation that's being offered in the beginning. And then if a buyer, you know, a lot of first time buyers or buyers that don't have a lot of cash, they will ask the seller to pay some of their closing costs. And the great news is this isn't going to get in the way of that. The real estate market is very resilient. These things will work themselves out. There's a little bit of change happening. There's a little uncertainty around the change. You know, we're working hard to get ahead of it, to understand it. Uh, but as somebody that's been doing this for 23 years, uh, I'm very unconcerned about it. In fact, I'm really excited that it's going to bring more transparency to the industry. We've used buyer representation agreements for over 20 years in our business. Uh, I think it's a good thing to talk openly with a buyer about how you get paid and how much you get paid. And it gives us a great opportunity to demonstrate our value. <laughs> All right. I saw a thread on Facebook today. It had over a thousand comments that if Donald J. Trump wins the election, the housing market's going to crash. Well, then right after that, I saw another thread that said, if Biden wins the election, the housing market's going to crash. So what's the deal? Is the housing market going to crash if one party wins or the other? Probably not. In fact, if you look back historically at the last 20, 20, 20 presidential elections, that's 80 years of history, the housing market has had breakout years every year after the elections, except once. So history tends to repeat itself. Now, here's another interesting fact. Uh, in those same 20 years, almost every single time interest rates come down right before the election. So if you're somebody thinking about buying or selling, good news, interest rates are probably gonna come down. The Fed's already been talking about decreasing them. Housing market is likely to be as healthy or healthier than it's ever been. We are seeing some increases in inventory, which is a good thing, gives you more choices as a buyer and prices are still up. So, hey, rates come down, things are healthy, the world's gonna all be okay and the real estate market will continue to thrive. All right, so it's 2024. Interest rates have been over 7% for the better part of 24 months. Somehow home prices keep rising and yet over 4 million people bought a home in the last year. It's a wild time in real estate. You know, and I hear a lot of people asking like, when is the best time to buy? And a lot of first time buyers asking the question of like, should I buy? This feels a little counterintuitive. Like why would anybody buy a home when rates are 7%? Let's talk about it. For a minute. So let's start with should I buy or when should I buy actually. And I want you to look at this table. There's a lot of history in this table. I want you to look at the heat map. Prices tend to do the same thing every single year. From January to June, they go up. From June to January, they go down. 
happens every year now. It's July now, which means you're about to see the news cycle that says prices are falling, home prices are crashing. Well, they're not. They're doing what they do every year. Now, you will see some exceptions on this map, and there's two I want to point out. Number one is during COVID. In 2020, there was so much stimulus money, and we had so much pent-up demand from the, you know, basically housing market being shut down in the spring that home prices continued to rise through the back half of that year. Totally abnormal, totally funded by stimulus, unlikely that ever happens. Again, you also saw home prices fall a bit in spring that year. Again, totally abnormal, totally unlikely to happen again. The second thing I wanna point out, go look at 2008, Great Recession, worst housing crash crisis in history. Prices still went up from January to June. They just went down more from June to the next January than they went up the next January to June. So all that's to say, if you're trying to time the market, which is a bit of a fool's errand, Look at a house in the winter. Look at a house in November, December, January. That a lot of times is when the best deals happen. Now, at the end of the day, if you hold, if you buy a house one January and you hold it for 10 Januaries, you are likely to be far better off than buying it in January and trying to sell it in June. Like I said, timing the market is often a fool's errand. Time in the market is the way to build wealth through real estate. So first time buyers, should I buy now? Should I buy later? Gosh, that's a loaded question because every single person's situation is different. And the thing I would encourage you to do is to sit down with your financial planner, sit down with a competent mortgage broker or loan officer and weigh your options. There's so many awesome programs out there. There's zero down programs. There is $100 down programs funded by Community Reinvestment Act funds. There are three and a half percent down FHA loans. There's VA loans with no money down. There's USDA loans with no money down. There's down payment assistance for low income buyers. There's so many different options out there they can get you into the market a lot of times for the same rent that you would be paying a landlord. Yeah, you're going to have maintenance costs and some other things, but if you can qualify for one of those, you can get your foot in the door and you can participate in that leveraged appreciation I've talked about in some of my other videos. A lot of times that is the pathway to start building wealth for your family. There's also plenty of times where I talk to people and I say, yeah, look, I don't think it's a great time for you to buy. And so it's a personal decision, it's a personal situation, and you've got to talk to a professional. And the key is carve the time out and have the conversation because it's almost impossible to time the market because you don't control the inventory. The best houses always sell fast, they always sell for the most money. And often when you are searching for your house and you start to narrow down what you want, et cetera, it can take months and months and months. So the, the idea that the perfect house is gonna be available at the perfect price at the perfect time, kind of a fan fantasy land, fairy tale. Uh, and so just get started, talk to a professional, figure out what the right steps are for you and go out there and find a home. It's Jeremy Taylor, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel where you're here. Post in the comments if you have questions or feedback, if you think I'm a moron, post it in the channel, I'd love to see that. Thanks so much, thanks for watching the video.